the Golden Order and its Golden Erd Tree, a symbol meant to signify the culmination of perfection, the perfect state of being, no mistakes, sins, blemishes of any kind, an order that has destroyed all the enemies that once opposed it, and now shines its golden rays across the lands between for all to witness. Its guidance of grace, showing the path one should follow to receive the grace of gold by its perfect god, Queen Merica the Eternal. I believe that everything this golden order represents is a massive lie. Because as we play the game and unravel its secrets, we can find all of the blemishes, sins, and lies within this perfect order. Royalty can still give birth to omens, their perfect children can still be slain, their Empyrean prodigies can still question the very guidance they are meant to represent, abandoning it altogether, and their giant golden tree can still burn down. <laughs> Could there be a more pitiable comedy? Look at it. The culmination of perfection. Burning before our very eyes. <laughs> I believe all of these imperfections will culminate in the shadow of the Erd Tree. It'll be a huge, literal representation of the Golden Order's lie. A giant, concealing veil casting that lie to the outside observer, but underneath that veil will unveil the truth that we are all starting to understand. Every single blasphemous trait that the Golden Order has tried to brush under the rug will all be out in the open. But as with every lie, the truth is going to come out eventually. Even Queen Merica herself started to question the Golden Order. In Merica's own words, I declare mine intent to search the depths of the Golden Order through understanding of the proper way. Our faith, our grace is increased. Those blissful early days of blind belief are long past. So if you're like me, one of the biggest questions that I want the DLC to answer is why did Merica decide to shatter the Elden Ring? Because from the dialogue we just heard, it sounds like she, at least at one point, wanted to understand the depths of the Golden Order through the proper way, increase her faith and her grace. Her son Godwin's death in the Night of Black Knives is known to be the catalyst for Merica shattering the Elden Ring. So while his death was a major factor in her decision, it was not the only reason but the final straw for her. The Black Knife assassins, according to their armor set description, tell us that they were the ones that carried out the deeds of the Night of the Black Knives, and rumored to be Newman, who had close ties with Merica herself. This is confirmed from the Newman rune that the Newman are said to have come from outside the lands between, and are in fact of the same stock as Queen Merica herself. So knowing all of that, I find it hard to believe that Merica didn't have something to do with the death of Godwin. There's too many relations that Merica has with these assassins for her not to be involved in some way, in my opinion. I lean more toward the belief that Merica and Ronnie worked together to plot the Night of Black Knives. Ronnie does admit to us that she was behind the death of Godwin, but I don't think the way Godwin was killed, where his soul was killed and his body lives on, was the intended death that Merica wanted for him. Oh, Lord Godwin. Such cruelty. Such humiliation. Oh, my poor sweet Lordling should have died a true death. As the first of the demigods to die. As a martyr to destined death. But why must it yet bring such disgrace? This finger reader here seems to be more upset with the disgrace of how Godwin died rather than his death in general. The key word here being Godwin should have died a true death. She even refers to him as a martyr to destined death, which means that Godwin was killed for a special purpose. Whether he was killed for the Golden Order he vividly represents or he volunteered to be killed for a purpose we don't know of yet, I believe that Merica at some point did search the depths of the Golden Order like she declared she would. 
and eventually found enough evidence where she decided that the lands between needed a change. I have long observed the lands between. This world is in dire need of repair and death. Indiscriminate. Are you prepared to commit a cardinal sin? What specifically Merica found, I'm not sure of. But whatever she did find, it was enough for her to decide that her golden child of the Golden Order needed to die as either a message to the world or to change Godwin in some way. I believe this is where Merica plotted with Ronnie to have Godwin killed. And Ronnie then took advantage of the situation to kill Godwin in a fashion that allowed her to shed her own Empyrean flesh and be rid of the influence the Greater Will had on her. We can learn from the Blasphemous Claw that Rikard was rewarded with this claw on the Night of Black Knives. It's pretty cool. It parries destined death itself. What exactly Rikard did to help in this plot we can't be sure of, but it definitely proves to me that Ronnie and Rikard worked together to kill Godwin. Rikard was likely already at a point where he was soon going to feed himself to the Great Serpent and start on his path of blasphemy. Maybe for him, committing such an act was so blasphemous that it allowed him to take the form of the serpent instead of him just being consumed like all of the others. I always assumed his demigod status allowed him to do this, but maybe there is more to this that we'll likely learn from Mesmer in Shadow of the Erd Tree. Again, we can't be sure why Merica would want Godwin killed, but here's what I believe. The Golden Order only came into existence after Destin Death was removed from the Elden Ring. The Rune of Death, otherwise known as Destin Death, was then entrusted by Merica to her shadow, Malekith. But as we know, a fragment of the Rune of Death was stolen by Ronnie. Unbeknownst to Merica or her Black Knife assassins, the daggers used to kill Godwin were infused with the Rune of Death, killing Godwin's soul. Maybe Merica wanted to see how death would work for a demigod with Destined Death removed. Maybe it would have transcended specifically Godwin beyond death into something more. And Merica kept trying and trying and trying after Godwin's death with not much success. It's been heavily theorized that Godwin was going to be the Elden Lord to Rani when she took the place of Queen Merica, and both Rani and Merica may have not wanted this to be the case. I've also started to consider that Rani may have promised Merica to replace her as the vessel of the Elden Ring. Merica at this point had no more enemies to defeat. She sent her husband, Lord Godfrey, and his warriors outside the lands between to fight, grow stronger, and die a true death of a warrior. I believe the Tarnished wanted this to happen, to continue to fight for their golden grace until they died. So it seems like Merica potentially knew that this could be the end for her as the Two Fingers were looking for her replacement. But because of Rani, the death of Godwin became, well, what we see of him now. Rani then did the same to herself, killing her body and setting her soul free from the influence of the Two Fingers, double-crossing Queen Merica, and in her grief, this is when she shattered the Elden Ring. I do believe Merica and Rani's relationship goes much deeper than we may think at first glance, because if Radagon is Merica, then Rani is also the daughter of Merica. But that would be with the understanding that Radagon has always been Merica, right? It's a tough question to answer, and I think we should regress a bit from this. We're getting into a territory that we just don't have enough information on to discuss without pure confusion. I'll save it for another video because the theories go wild with this. I have spent the last month processing the DLC trailer, and I believe that most of the community has come to a conclusion of the location of the Land of Shadows. As we've been discussing, it's no secret that Merica has been hiding things about herself, about others, about many different events. The Mimic's Veil, also known as Merica's Mischief, allows one to change their appearance into something different. This item portrays to us that Merica may not be exactly as she seems. In the Gold Mask questline, we come to understand that unknown to everyone else in the Lands Between, even her most loyal of followers, Merica and Radagon 
are one and the same. America and the Golden Order have clearly gone to great lengths to make sure this remains a secret. And I've started to believe that Radagon could be a silver tier mimic himself. In the DLC trailer, we can see a cloth-like drape falling over the Realm of Shadow. I believe this drape is basically a huge mimic's veil being cast from the top of the Erd Tree, hiding the Land of Shadow in plain sight from the lands between. The golden tree we all see is just an illusion, sort of like how Morgoth sends an illusion of himself to fight us outside of Stormvale Castle. Another example within the lower sections of Altus Plateau, we can find a mirage tower that disappears completely until you break three magical seals. Within this tower, you can find two different spells, Unseen Form and Unseen Blade, and the description of each points us towards the assassins in Celia who considered every option that aided their dirty work. Similar seals can be found in Ordina, locked away in an ever jail that grants access to Mikola's Halic Tree. It's possible that the Land of Shadow is locked away inside its own humongous Everjail. That seems to be the recurring fate for those deemed a threat to the Golden Order. They're locked away, and Everjails to be basically forgotten. The Divine Towers may serve as their own magical seals, holding down various segments of the Concealing Veil, with each tower having its own two fingers to watch over these seals. Every tower that is except for Ronnie's, whose two fingers, her fate, were held in the stars by her brother Radon. And when we defeat Radon, we release Ronnie's two fingers to crash down into the Cathedral of Manicellus, where with the power of the Finger Slayer Blade that we give to her, she can finally slay her two fingers and set her true plans into motion. Here. Beginneth the chill night that encompasses all, reaching the great beyond, as the path stretcheth into darkness. There's simply too many questions that I need answers for to feel confident with any of the theories I'm suggesting in this video. But I do believe there is still another that wants to uproot America and the Golden Order's secrets. While his soul may not be living, his body, his very being, wants very much to be known, to be seen again. He has been spreading his influence through the lands between for generations at this point, slowly growing, twisting at the dark roots below the world, choking the life out of the Great Tree, likely in hopes of breaking the seal, and therefore breaking the illusion that that veil creates. Godwin's death root can tell us of Malekith's sin toward Queen Merica. On the night of the dire plot, the stolen rune of death enabled the first death of a demigod. Later, the rune of death spread across the lands between throughout the underground roots of the Great Tree, sprouting in the form of death root. Now, Malekith is tasked with consuming the death root in an attempt to sedate that spread. But in the end, Malekith could not keep his vow for Merica. Forgive me. America, the Golden Order, cannot be restored. Godwin is still very much alive. To those who live in death, he has become their Prince of Death. Whatever America wanted Godwin to become, or whether she wanted him to ascend to something beyond death, in a way, he did. Whether we fight Godwin or talk with him in the DLC, I believe that he is the one that holds the truth behind this massive golden lie. Our Lord will rise, the Lord of the many and the meek. Godwin, is that you, dear? <laughs>